Thank you for clicking on this video. I hope you enjoy. And if you do, then don't forget to like and subscribe. Ring that notification bell so you stay up to date on further content. Jolantru, greetings and welcome to Shadowstar. I am Captain Richard, aka The Renegade, and this is the Starship Review video. Taking a look at Starship stats and minor visual details, but not much there. <laughs> yes, we'll be taking a look at an impressive and perhaps newest line of stunningly strong escort vessel, perhaps even taking the place of the Elita class. This new Strike Wing ship it's definitely going to be a formidable and great asset to any fleet. And it's definitely one that, well, really caught my attention. Mostly because for a DPS style vessel, this one has got good practical uses in other areas as well. Now, First of all, I hope you are comfortable here aboard the USS Shadowstar YT on one of her prob probably last flights in a Starship review. Guys, please get comfortable and allow me to welcome you, be you Dominion, Romulan, Federation, oh yes, even Klingon, I see you spies back there. What, you think I wasn't going to notice? Don't worry, we've got nothing to hide. This is a powerful ship, so allow me to introduce to you a ship which class name is quite fitting. Named after a legendary historic aviation pilot, allow me to introduce to you the Strike Wing Escort Tier 6 ship known as the Earhart class. Well, Suffice to say, she's a fairly large ship for an escort. But quite fitting, in fact, seeing as this stylish and very sleek designed ship will be quite effective within atmosphere or, of course, in its place of designation, space. She's quite powerful and elegant, but her greatest asset. Whoopsie daisy. <laughs> Don't you be moving in that hangar ship. Is a fly-through hangar. <laughs> so, here in dock, with an impressive looking display of armaments, let's take a look at her magnificent stats. Oh, and a ah, better idea. Now we can have a truly good look at her. So, this is a tier 6 starship of the Federation and Federation allied factions. Klingons have their own variant ship with a much more triangular design. Though I can't say this one doesn't show its own little points. The thing that you'll first notice on this ship is the fact that she does bear fail fairly similar details to a Sabre class. So, the fact that she is essentially a huge carrier version of a Sabre class is kind of fitting. I quite like it. Though, also makes me kind of upset because I would have loved to have seen the hangar in place of the deflector and seen the deflector below where the hangar is. But you can't win them all. She's actually an evolution of an older Starship design that we will show off in a bit as we take a look at minor reflections and changes you can have to her design. She is requiring you to complete the tutorial itself, then she'll become a scaling tier 6 ship that will slowly improve as you do, meaning you can grow with your ship. Quite a nice touch to be honest. As an escort, she's got quite a good hull modifier of 1.05. This gives her greater defenses on average against your typical escort, which will only have a hull modifier of 1 or maybe 0 0.9. She's a tough little cookie. Definitely explains why her shape and style is kind of similar to a Defiant class. Yes, I definitely 
feel like she's a cross between the Defiant and the Saber. A shield modifier of 0.95 is average for these ships, but bearing in mind that this ship, being a strike wing escort, she is actually probably better designated if you described her as, well, a first wing fleet base. So basically, a small attack wing that can be sent in to initially perform a strike and then quickly pull out. If this was the Klingons, it would be like having a carrier that's carrying a bunch of bird of praise. Little standard bird of praise, mind you, but bird of praise. Its forward weapon arc is a very impressive five forward weapons and this aft arc is left to be desired with only two aft weapon slots however there's nothing wrong with using two omnidirectional beams and dual beams in the front to make this ship a very very dangerous high yield or beam overload should I say strike ship dealing extreme levels of damage on the forward attack arc you could also go for your dual cannons and turrets to perform a powerful scatter volley so long as you have a support ship like myself gathering your allies up not that you definitely definitely need a support dps ship but well they come in handy right come on i like to feel useful however this ship is boasting a second type of rear weapon this is its omnidirectional specialized experimental weapon. This ship even comes with its own personal variation of this experimental weapon that like the typical experimental weapon you get on all the prior escorts, it deals electrical damage, perhaps the best form of exotic damage you can deal. However, this weapon is in a class of its own and perhaps may even be able to take the place of my current favorite the rail gun but we'll see after we upgrade that to an epic rank to see if it's worth doing stick around to be able to see that upgrade star trek command is uh, currently telling me i have something to do but i don't care <laughs> it comes with two device slots as typical to your escort starships Hell, if it didn't come with two device slots, I would be a little bit worried. Do you mind zooming out? I'm only trying to click down the screen, thank you. Ugh. She has a base turn rate of 14, pretty average for an escort, but not really on the bad side, it is still well, where you want it to be. Sure, she doesn't shine as one of the most agile escorts going. We'll always go to the pilot vessels. But she's a command ship. She doesn't need to be agile. Oh, sorry, as agile. She's still an escort. Her impulse modifi modifier is 0 0.19. 0 .19. Which is pretty good, however, a little low from what I would like. And an inertia of 70 means that she at least can still drift her enemies and keep them in the forward arc. Her bonus power settings are exactly where you'd expect them to be. She has the bonus power setting of 10 to weapons, 5 to engines and 5 to auxiliary. Making her support debut quite effective. This is boosted later by her science and engineering setup, but later. She comes with one hangar bay. This is equipped with the C type, well, the class C shuttlecraft. Your atypical Discovery era shuttlecraft, improved for our present time in, well, the period of Star Trek Online and the Iconian War, so to speak. She comes with the Starfleet Ability Package of precise weapon systems, boosting accuracy, tactical maneuvers, boosting defense, quick deployment, 
inhibitions all damage increase and devastating weaponry which will improve your critical chance. Her starship trait is called target that explosion. Kind of terrifying. And as for Admiralty, this starship is impressive. Her special is a plus 10 tack when her science ship that she's flying with, proving that she's part of a support wing. And her tack score is 50, science score 32, and engineering score 26. Exactly where I'd expect this ship to be lying. <sighs> Guys, have we got the other ship in dock? Good. Bring her out. Ah, the ambassador of the Klingons is here. <laughs> Just to give us a good, fixed look at the Klingon version of this starship as we go through the next bit of stats. So, yes, in case you were wondering, Klingons are watching. We did know you were going to be here. It was intended. It'd fully be more simple this way. So the ambassador has brought along the SEC strike ship, or the SEC class. Now, introducing this ship is definitely a handful, considering this one is kind of terrifying. Respect to the Klingons. This ship has got the devastating look, though, the D what was it? I don't think it was. Well, I'm glad you tried to scare us. Maybe it was our own intelligence. Okay, we got our intelligence wrong. We thought this was your D, but you gave us a bigger D. A giga D. It's safe to say this ship is quite terrifying and tough and true to its nature. It being a strike ship is also quite fitting too. Almost like a miniature cruiser, this ship is powerful and well armed. Exactly the same stats as the Federation counterpart which is why it's here now. There is just one big difference though. One edge the Klingons have over Starfleet. This starship can cloak. That is something we should be nervous of perhaps. But, well, seeing as this is its only skin minus its fleet appearance, at least we see it coming now. <laughs> So, to continue on, we'll get on with the vastly important stats. Now, we have already mentioned that it has one hangar bay. Bearing in mind the way these ships function, it really should have had two hangar bays. It's a shame that Starfleet didn't think of this. Nor did the Klingons, really. But, that cloaking system, its big one up, is actually slightly superior still, as it has a battle cloak, enabling it to, well, conceal itself in the midst of battle and perform multiple preemptive strikes in different locations or even against one enemy it can do multiple stealth strikes this cloaking technology of the ship makes it extremely versatile and dangerous and definitely a more threatening dps vessel as we move into the big points the big guns so we'll start off with its consoles This starship has four tactical consoles, three engineering and three science, scaling with your level. Thanks to this, it is a powerful DPS ship. Guaranteed, it's going to do well, especially with its five forward and three aft weapons, including this experimental weapon that is. She has three engineering, giving her a good bit of toughness to take some damage in battle, and three science positions. That is going to allow for an extended duration of support abilities, healing or regeneration. As a result, both the Klingon and Federation Starship are powerful DPS regenerators, as well as powerful DPS ships in general. They will tank pretty well and will provide a powerful support when and where necessary. Specializing in tactical support or DPS support, as with its hangars, its size positions, its engineering you could use more versatile in a more versatile manner, and for tactical it will be causing devastating attacks. Probably best paired with birds of prey, 
or in the Federation's case, Defiance and Prometheus classes. But, this is to say we haven't reached the ship's pinnacle of potential yet, because she gets worse. So, to continue this on, she has impressive, in, impressively one Ensign Tactical Position and one Commander Tactical Position as expected from an Escort style ship. She has a Lieutenant Engineering and a Lieutenant Commander Science. She then has a Lieutenant Commander Universal Command Position. Now... Honestly, because of my standard type of build, I would probably be edging towards making that universal and engineering position. But you can see quite heavily here why this ship is so powerful in the whole support DPS line of things. See, this ship not only has its hangar, which can be used in more versatile ways. You could have shield drones if you wanted. Strike frigates as I might do, Kardashian strike frigates. But this ship is dealing heavy amounts of damage, has the British officer positions to deal even higher amounts of damage, and the perfect size positions to not only control, but also possibly drain or heal enemies and allies. Mm, heal allies, drain enemies. These ships have some terrifying potential in that role, and therefore, is probably my favorite, even if not best looking, my favorite support DPS ship, for an escort at least. I still say support DPS ships are better off in their cruisers, as they don't really need all the maneuverability, but, well, this ship is definitely gunning the job. More so than some. Hmm. Let's get into another question. How well does this ship do stats, console, special weapon and hangar wise? Well, first of all, we'll start off with its mastery and its trait. The target, that explosion. So, this causes, torpedoes cause allies to coordinate fire. Effectively meaning, after activating any torpedo or command bridge officer ability, torpedo high yield, torpedo spread, you get the, you get the drift. When your next torpedo deals damage, up to five Nearby allies launch a torpedo at that target, dealing 2,869 damage. Kinetic damage. This is good. This is good for many reasons. One, this means your allies can fire a torpedo shot. It won't be their own torpedoes, but can fire a torpedo shot without having to proc the torpedo command. If your enemy's shields are down, this will be devastating as this will deal heavy amounts of hold damage to your enemies, making this one of the best DPS traits you could possibly be flying with. Among certain others, but hey, that's my style, not theirs. The trait itself, well, although specialized towards the torpedo front and great for torpedo boats, I can still honestly say that this is giving more reason why people should fly, well, kind of like I do, with at least one torpedo on your ship. Because with the right bonuses to that torpedo, the right modifiers, one torpedo is all you need to take an enemy out once its shields are down. My personal f favorite being tricobalt with penetration and damage boost. This being because 
If penetration procs and you have naturally damage boost instead of critical hit, most ships will be destroyed. Well, under my testing. <laughs> it's quite useful. Now, on to the next subject at hand. Well, look at this. Beautiful console. Get ready to see this in action later. The Universal Cascade Gravimetric Disruption. Dealing, well, it's passive. It deals plus 6.8% direct energy damage. All direct energy damage. So all your direct energy weapons are now boosted. And plus 14.6 Starship Control Expertise. Again, this is making it a powerful DPS support hybrid console. Much like I play, this is the kind of console for those like me are looking for. Because this ship will enable us to control, gather, the enemies in our forward arcs. Now, bearing in mind this ship is already powerful in the forward arc, the ability to gather up the enemies in the forward arc and allow for your allies who have hopefully got similar forward arcs to gather around you and use cannon scatter volley, torpedo spread, and beam fire at will to hit heavy amount of targets despite using weapons like dual beams and heavy cannons, which as we all know have a very small firing arc, means that you will now be able to deal heavy, well, use the weapons that deal the heaviest damage with a much higher accuracy and hit rate devastating most enemies. I think you see why DPS support is so useful now. DPS support is going to really benefit from this console. Maybe we'll see more DPS support players. I am um, probably not. For every attack wing you need, you only need one of them. But hey, DPSs. At least you now know a way that you could be even more dangerous. Perhaps the DPS ship wants to take control of the battlefield. You don't have to be a DPS support to at least have good control abilities. And with the right procs, you should be able to gather an enemy and destroy them yourself. I'm kind of terrified at the new DPS layout. Moving on, we shall go before having a look at <laughs> the Engel class. Let's take a look at the hangar of this ship. So, the House Mokai fighter is a basic fighter with disruptor beam, omnidirectional omni disruptor beam, and beam overload. Considering what beam overload does these days, that's not a bad thing. These Mokai fighters are going to be able to deal heavy amounts of damage and their advanced counterpart, well... Where it's hiding from me? That's a little concerning. There should be an advanced counterpart to this ship. It's probably a bug that I haven't got it at the moment. But hey, I will test that later. Back in the space dock and we see the Engel class here. Well guys, first thing you may notice is that very large cannon at the front of the ship. That dual cannon is definitely going to be packing a punch behind it. Nice deflector dish. Very slick nacelle designs considering its shape and design is basically a blade with a large underside. No fly-through hangar, but, well, can't complain at this starship from not having one. She's a tough cookie. I don't recall trying to activate that, but okay. Now then. To be said, we have the hangar a C class or class C shuttlecraft that comes with this ship essentially this is directly a federation variant of the Klingon ship so phaser beam omnidirectional phaser beam and beam overload 
Therefore, it's pretty safe to say that the advanced version displaces well with the Klingon. So you'd have a phaser beam, omnidirectional phaser beam, beam overload to an aceton beam. Exotic damage dealt through radiation. Not bad. For those that don't know, these are obviously being a strike fighter or shuttlecraft, should I say, you're able to launch six of them in total. And these ships are, well, where are they? <laughs> Quite beastly looking. Oh my god, trying to move this slow enough so that you can see this sh shuttlecraft is awkward. There we go. It's not a quite tough looking little fighter. It's a shuttlecraft. Personally, not my choice. But it will definitely be effective in combat. As we build, test them out and see before I use my full build. <laughs> oh, it's coming, guys. Don't worry. We will go on this ship and then you will sit back here as mine goes into action. <clears throat> But to continue on the statements, and whoops, speed up my mouse again. We have a magnificent weapon known as the subatomic field disruptor. This weapon is a 360 degree arc weapon dealing 3,526 electrical damage over 10 seconds. The disruptor spreads with foes within 2.5 kilometers, causing Similar damage, 2,351 electrical damage over 10 seconds. As a result, the subatomic field disruptor is actually far more powerful than the original hyperexcited ion stream, which deals, as you can see, very basic damage in comparison, and actually rivals my favorite, the experimental rail gun. But does it get better? Well, the hype, the hype, oopsie daisy, show me it. The hypercharged field projector is a point defense version of this weapon with a boost in accuracy rating to your ship and then dealing high levels of electrical damage as much as possible with full shield penetration, perhaps a rival to it. The, ex the Alliance Hyper Cannon is also quite effective, but quite good. It heavy radiation damage, to say the least, but that's its best point. And we've all seen the voice of the problem, which deals heavy physical damage over a wide sweeping area. Probably the best one out of them all. But here we go. I'm doing the upgrade, so you don't have to. And done. I know I could have looked at it in here to see what it would get, but hey, I'm naughty. So, we have the electrical DOT spread to nearby foes again. Now it is a 5,947 electrical damage over 10 seconds, with 3,965 electrical damage to the nearby foes. Again, this weapon is a boost in crit severity critical chance and accuracy. These can be modified out though, so I guess they don't really matter. <clears throat> Perhaps naughty that I upgraded that already. But let's go see what this ship can do in action. Everyone, I request that you beam over to the USS Eckhart now, as I take in a combat. Helm, take us out. Okay, so we find ourselves in battle, guys. <laughs> We'll take her in for a test run. Initial combat? Well, 
Hopefully, we're going to get a good strike off with. Ooh, you're close. And fire. Look at that. How's your girl? Not a bad little strike. Ooh, she took a lot of damage though, quite quickly. Not best for me. <laughs> okay, so I'm now all shot. Not my best play. Yeah, she's weak when she's on the fight. Most of them are. And hell, let's be honest, I'm not strong. Um, I'm in a very bad place doing that right here. Don't damage the ship already. Whoops. So, yeah. I forgot to mention, didn't I? I talked about the console, but I didn't really say what it really did. I only said it's passive effects. I got a little bit overexcited over it being so, such a powerful support DBS console. <laughs> well, spreading kinetic damage and delayed pull. What? So, with a forward attacking arc of 135 degrees, she deals 16,900 and 90, sorry, 951.8 kinetic damage. Distortion spreads affects foes within three kilometers and repeats up to five times. After hitting the final target, deals 23,671.4 kinetic damage. Pulls all affected for foes towards the explosion. It's a very devastating attack console. Powerful DPS, definitely. And also quite definite to say, I'm not going to survive this fight too overly well. <laughs> it is in advance after all. Let's fix this, shall we? Back at this point. And I'm going to introduce my Eckhart's class. Big warning, this is a control spec support DPS starship. That means this one isn't built for healing. This one isn't built for draining. It's not your average support build. This one is a flagship killer. It heightens its DPS uh, output while simultaneously combining control. It's basically what this ship would be best for if you're a DPS player and if you're a support DPS player. The big warning to give. As you can probably see, I've combining another console here. This console you get with the Baran class, the Shepherd class, I believe. Not the Baran class, the Gargarin class. The Graviton Displacer. This is a control type console. Benefiting from the Starship Control Expertise Boost. This console also, also deals damage itself, so it's great DPS wise. If you have the Shepherd class, it's a great tandem console to use with the Cascading Gravimetric Disruption. As you can see, my ship is built here, even using tri for a heavy punch at the end, and it's actually a hybrid of cannons, beams, and torpedoes, because I'm not an elitist. I don't specialize in just one weapon. I like to have fun and use all types. Boosting defense, still using the experimental weapon and using the advanced version of the shuttlecrafts, even though they're not my preferred. We're now going to see what this ship can do. Bearing in mind it's still damaged. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Give myself some time. Starships, I want you to be running. Cause the pets to defend current friendly target. Assault any. Yeah, I want you to go punch crazy. 
I'm not going to hold back against these first ones. I'm going to hit those as hard as you can. Hopefully, while they're clustered together. We are now gathering in. went on the reverse to grab by reversing while using the whoops graviton displacer you actually pull the enemies against things like gravitational wells and believe it or not it deals a bit more damage I lost one fighter there not great for them I would have hoped they'd survive that a little bit better Sorry, took him out for a minor pause there. Ooh, Jemadar Heavy Escort. Okay, that guy's in trouble. Can't really show off what this console really does, but let's see how well we do, shall we? Here's the fact. Holy moly, now that I'm actually boosting what it does for damage. That was um, a bit more devastating than I was expecting. Last bit of health there went in seconds. Next up, Keldon class. That'll be our final target, I think. All fighters engage. We are combat ready. Gone! They're devastated. Didn't stand a chance. What the hell? <sighs> a bit damning that really, isn't it? When a ship is just that damn powerful. And I am not even the best kind of build you could get. There is definitely better versions of the build I use. I, I haven't upgraded my build in ages. So... Well, I've put minor different things in place, but not had a proper build upgrade in a long time. So personally, I feel like this says a lot about the ships. The ship's potential in general. Goddamn. Guys, goddamn. Okay, so is the ship worth it? Final stages of this review. <coughs> Excuse me. Bearing in mind there's no bridge with it. Well, other than the Discovery Bridge, you can add that to it, but... I'd say this ship is quite worth it for most people. Uh, tanks, you might want a 50-50. It's really soft, and yeah, it's an escort, so of course it's not the best tanking ship. So we'll dismiss the old tanking aspect, and we'll think about support and DPS. Science users... Science... Well, those of you who take a more support role, yeah, I think I'll score this ship 8 out of 10 for you. As an escort, as a support type escort, it's very powerful and very effective. 
if you want an agile and versatile support ship, this escort will do it for you. DPS players. Oh yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely score highly again. Good amount of science, well, the tactical consoles are good, they're the average really. Great amount of science console positions, which is better than average really. Giving you a good cannon setup, good beam setup. The ship really does benefit from its build style and its special weapon. Honestly, I'll go 9 out of 10 for DPS. Overall for the Starship scoring, well, I've taken styling into account, and it is quite an interesting looking ship, which I myself, though I didn't like the initial Mirror Universe one, will score this one's design at 9 out of 10. I think my overall score for the ship... Overall score, 9 out of 10. I'm going to score the ship really highly, actually, because it's about time we had a escort that was just a great escort, and also a great support ship. She is brilliant, and one I strongly recommend. As for her trait, her trait gets an 8 out of 10 from me. Her console gets an 8 out of 10 from me. Her hangar pets, I'm sorry buddies, but you're 2 out of 10, you're kind of pathetic. And its experimental weapon gets a 7 out of 10. From what we could see of it in action, it's effective, but it's not the best. I would be using it if you're an exotic type damage user, but for most other types, I would probably still stick with the Railgun or the Alliance Hypercharge Cannon. Overall, I can definitely say this is a great ship to get. If you can afford to get both the Klingon and the Federation variants, then by all means, go for it. But if you can only afford one, well, I don't see anything wrong with getting this starship. What are your thoughts, guys? What do you think of her? I would look forward to seeing it in the look forward to seeing a discussion from you guys in my chat. But right now, I'd just like to say thank you for watching. I greatly appreciate the support you've shown by watching all the way to the end of this video, and it has been a long one. The visual review, if not linked below, will be out soon, guys. And I can happily say a further massive thank you to my Patreon. Those who support me via Patreon or those that support me through a PayPal supplemented donation that are linked below, you guys massively help this channel out. And to my Patreon I have presently Tribal Typhoon. Thank you as it was your donations that made this video possible. Until next time guys, thank you for watching, and hopefully by the next review video we'll have hit 1000 subscribers. Maybe even hit enough hour of watching to uh, be monetized, but that's not this video's goal. I'm not aiming for monetization. I want this channel to be successful due to support from the viewers, and not by the little bit screwed up system within YouTube. Though I admit I'm a little bit more supportive than recently due to recent activities. <laughs> why am I still talking? I know why, because I want to go fight. Okay, stick around for a bit though.
engage.